Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm an absolutely huge fan of teaching maths through story and in fact I think I could probably say it is my favourite way to teach maths. So this is my third video in my series all called I Love Math Stories and in this video I'm going to concentrate on this fantastic book. It's circumference and all the king's tens. And actually on the front cover it even says a math adventure. And it certainly is. So in this video I'm going to give you a synopsis of the story so you can find out what it's all about and whether your children or your child at home would be interested in it. And then I'm going to give lots of suggestions of how you could use this in class or at home to get loads of maths done. I really hope you find it useful. Let's have a look at the book Circumference and All the King's Ten. Now this book is particularly suitable for Year 4. It very much matches the Year 4 National Curriculum Objectives for Maths in England, such as reading, writing, ordering, comparing numbers beyond a thousand, um, adding numbers up to four digits, um, estimating and representing numbers in lots of different ways. So it very much fits in with Year 4, however it could be used with Year 3 and you could play around with the activities that I've suggested and also the other way you could go up to Year 5 and perhaps you could find some ways to make it a little bit harder. So let me tell you about this story. So this is all about um, a king who seems a bit gloomy and so Lady Di and her husband's circumference decide that as it's his birthday coming they'll give him a party but they'll do a surprise party and so the invitations were sent out and people started to get ready building long tables and guests started to arrive and herein lies the problem the guests started to arrive and the castle was already exploding with guests so they moved them all out into the meadow into a grassy field and said, right, let's see how many people we've got. And the next couple of pages is all exploring how they're gonna count how many guests have come. And they have different suggestions like standing in circles and standing in a straight line, but they work out that that would actually be way too long a line to count. And there's lots of reasoning and problem solving and they finally come up with a suggestion of organizing them into groups of 10 and think about how it's easier to count. However, it doesn't take them long to realise that that's still a lot of people to count in lots of ten, and so they do a bit of organising. And you can see through this picture, they organise them into hundreds. And the numbers are starting to get quite big, so that's why it's suitable for year four. So, they think they've solved the problem and more people arrive, and they're getting up to over a thousand guests. So, once again, they're thinking about how they can organise these guests and hide them because it's a surprise party. So they set different tents up with different values and hide the guests in the tents. And once they've all the guests have arrived, they've discovered they've got absolutely massive numbers and we've actually got well over 10,000 here by the time we count up how many guests had already arrived. So there's lots of opportunities for adding and subtracting, estimating, all of that type of thing. So everybody's in their tent and the king finally arrives. And he's a little bit grumpy, but he thinks he doesn't quite know what's going on and suddenly, right in front of his eyes, there was a signal and all of the king's tens came out to salute the king, singing and dancing and made a wonderful birthday for the king. So they celebrate the king's birthday and all have a wonderful time. And that is the story of circumference and all the king's ten. Here are the national curriculum links in England and as you can see by the objectives it lends itself really well for a year four maths curriculum. Aside from the objectives listed there are loads of other reasons to do math through story, there's loads of communicating mathematically, children get to practice a wide range of skills like estimating, predicting, counting, organising, refining, etc. And in this example I've done loads of group work or whole class work, so it's all about working as a team and working with a partner, sharing responsibility, but of course having some fun too. 
Next, I'm going to share with you some of the ideas that I've had to go with this amazing book, Circumference and All the King's Tens. It really has been written as a maths adventure, so it lends itself beautifully. And the ideas that I've come up with, I've organised into five sessions, but please pick and choose as you feel fit. But it really is a great book to explore maths with. Session one. Start off by discussing the title of the book and the maths in it. And do look out for the names of the characters through the book. They're really good. They're really funny. So in this session, we're going to look at how to count. And we're going to mimic what's going on in the story. So give out large piles of counters and cubes to the tables. And explain we're going to find out how many we've got in the class. And direct them to count by putting their counters in the circle, just like in the book. And mimic the story by getting them to call out their amounts. And agree that actually this isn't the easiest way to do it. And see if they've got any suggestions. Continue to mimic the book by organising the counters in a straight line and getting them to brainstorm about how they could organise the amounts to count more easily. Then go on to Circumference's idea. Is it the same as ours, theirs? And get them to organise their counters into rows of 10 and talk about whether that helps and whether that's quicker. Carry on reading the book and you'll find out that putting them in rows of 10, there's still too many to see at a glance, so what now? So this is all about getting children to think about the best way to count. And we're going to start then representing that value in a place value chart, writing it in words, um, ordering, comparing the numbers that we've got on the table. We're going to do lots of maths within that first session. Session two. So to start the session off, revise the story, what's happened so far, and also revise the learning. What did they find out yesterday about counting quickly? So share the same image again from page 16 and see if children can work out how many guests there were all together and write it in digits and words. This session is all going to be about representing this number in different ways and I really recommend using base 10 as your manipulative. And if you don't have enough then you could use um, go onto the MathSpot website or Toy Theatre and you can use the virtual manipulatives. So what we're going to get children to do is represent these numbers in a draw and on their whiteboards children represent how many we've got. And then in the story, 25 more guests arrive and what we want them to do is also represent this by adding it to their draw on their whiteboards and working out how many guests now. Now, what's been very cleverly done here is that there would need to be some regrouping and look out for those children who do that and ask them to share why they've done it and what they have done. And then just to make sure everyone's got an understanding, go on to um, Lady Di's idea of regrouping on page 18 and page 19 and model that so they can see if they did it in the same way. Read page 20 and ask the children how many guests they think would fit in the enormous tent they're talking about. And you can link this to a place value chart, but also link it to the pictures the children can see. So they can see a tent for nine, for 900, for 9,000. What do they think the next size tent will be? And then it's time for children to practice that skill of regrouping. And they can play in pairs and you can generate numbers using dice and, and use some cards. And the idea around this would be that the first number they generate is the number of guests at the party. And they need to draw that on their whiteboard or in their maths book. Then they turn over a card and it tells them whether they're adding guests or removing guests. And then they roll the dice and that is the amount they have to add or remove. And they represent this action with a draw. They could also check their answer using a formal method. Finish the session by reading page 21 and show them the images on the page and get them to think about how many guests they think there are all together. And they can count as a class or you can encourage them to calculate using formal methods. Session three, revise the story so far, just like you've done before, ask them what they've learned, what skills they were practicing, and then revisit the same question you finished with yesterday. How many guests at the surprise party so far? Show them the image again on page 22 and get them to think about what they did yesterday, whether they counted or calculated and practice that again and share answers. Then read page 23 and get them to imagine what it would be like to have a birthday party with so many hidden guests. And it's the hidden guess part we're going to pick up with for the activity for that day. So the children are going to guess the number of guests. So you're going to demonstrate it and model it. So write or draw a four digit number and don't show the children. And then the idea is that you're going to give the children clues to your number one at a time. Now, this isn't an easy thing to do. So you're definitely going to have to do some teaching around a range of maths vocabulary that might be useful. Talking about what makes a good clue 
um, and talking about giving clues that tell people something. So on the next slide, I've got some suggestions. You could use some of these suggestions for your model, um, but you could also use these ideas and generate maybe a vocabulary list or provide children with some STEM sentences to help them actually write clues. And that's why I'd advise doing this in pairs. I think children need to bounce their ideas off each other. I think they need to be able to test whether their clues actually give the right answer. And you will have to do some differentiation because it might be that you decide that you don't want the numbers to be so big, but you want them to be able to use the language and reason and talk about number. Session four. So revise the story and what's happened so far and revise the learning over the last couple of sessions and read pages 22 and 23 again. Go on to page 24 and ask the children to represent the number of guests in a place value chart with digits. You could also get them to write it in words and get them to represent it with base 10. Read up to and including just the first paragraph on page 30 and then stop. And have some conversations about the king in the story. How old do they think he is? How many candles do they think he will have on his cake? And then, depending on which country you're in in the world, talk about whether you have a king. And if not, who will be the next king and how old is he? Now, for our example, um, I'm going to use Prince Charles because I'm in London. So we're going to think about how many candles has Prince Charles had on his cake. And he is 71 years old in 2020. So explain to the children that Prince Charles has had new candles on his cake each year and get the children to estimate how many candles will have been used all together by the time he gets to his 71st birthday. You can talk about the estimates and share them and then perhaps do an empty number line and put some of the estimates on there and discuss the range and who they think is closest to the real answer and why. Next, we want the children to think about, well, how are we going to work out how many candles Prince Charles has had on his cake? So give them some chance to talk to each other and come up with a suggestion that we could share the job. This is where you'll need to do a bit of differentiation and think about the needs in your class and how you best group them. Because actually, you could group them by ability, thinking about how easy they find to calculate, read, recognise, order numbers. So they can be split up in this way. And I've just noticed I've made a mistake on that that note so apologies but group one um, they're going to be thinking about how many candles needed for Prince Charles for his first to tenth birthday and the idea there is on his first birthday he'll have one candle on his second birthday he'll have two candles then three candles etc and children need to add those candles together and when they do that that you would actually need 55 candles for it. Prince Charles's first to 10th birthday and that group might really benefit from using Numicon because actually you could see that you could make tens quite easily rather than just adding one add two add three add four so continue that for all the groups in the class so split them up as appropriate and look what you really want to do is get the children to think about easy ways for adding just like we did easy ways for counting so children can look for pairs that make a total easily and I've put some examples on there to guide you I really do think it's worth doing lots of mini plenaries during this session to share methods. So making sure children are actually calculating efficiently. And this is quite important because it's been a theme throughout the book and the children count efficiently. And now can they calculate efficiently? It's also great to do some pattern sniffing and see what they notice about how, how many more candles are needed every 10 years and see if they can pick up it's 100 more each time and think about why that might be. Once they have calculated all their groups, see if they know what to do next and hopefully they'll recognise they find the total. And you can discuss lots of different ways of doing this. And then you can read the rest of the story. Session five. So you finish the storybook and now it's time to celebrate it. So you could finish off with having some hands-on fun by getting the children to make a massive birthday cake for the king. Now to do this, you're going to have to search the school for as much multi-link as you can, because the more, the better. On page 30, another group appears from the city of Addingmore and tell the children that there are 100 more guests in this city from Addingmore and they're going to make a cake out of multi-link to feed them. Show the children two cubes and tell them that this is the size of the slice for one guest and there are 100 of them. So how many cubes do we need? And you can talk about commutativity because some children might say we need 100 lots of two. And you can talk about how it's easier to count two lots of 100 than 100 lots of two. But it will give us the same answer. 
then show the children this massive bag of cubes that you've got and ask them how they're going to count them and go back to the theme of the story and what they've learned and talk about different options so they could do rows of two rows of 10 rows of 100 but talk about how it's important to be able to see it at a glance to make sure they've got the right number just like in the book so discuss the pros and cons and then children have to come up with a plan about the best way to share the cubes out. And hopefully, because they have shared lots of work during the week, they'll really be able to distribute the jobs fairly. Then, of course, they get to make the cake and you can take some photographs and celebrate the wonderful story that you've shared. Those are my ideas of how you can use circumference and all the king's tens in the classroom or at home. I really hope you give it a go. It's a fantastic book. Please like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. And if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll know when I've uploaded any new primary maths videos. Head over to my Facebook page, Curious Maths, for more maths fun. Thanks for watching.